Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we are going to force a CPU through a closed socket, then we are going to look at a ZIF socket, and finally we are going to straighten some bent pins. As part of our 3.2 GHz challenge, we looked at several CPUs and most of them had pins. I was about to delete the following part and never think of it again, but there is an important lesson here. Let's see the issue. Before we discuss what's the problem here, let's see what types of CPUs are there. This is the so-called pin grid array, the PGA. This method of making electrical contact between the CPU and the motherboard is still in use by AMD for its desktop CPUs, but there are signs that this will soon change. The CPU has pins, and the motherboard has many small holes in the socket where the CPU fits in. There's also a small lever that holds the CPU in place. In the same series, there was a socket 775 Pentium 4 that didn't have any pins. These processors are called LGA, Land Grid Array. This method of making electrical contact has the pins on the motherboard socket. Also, the motherboard has a special retention mechanism for the CPU. Here are a list of advantages of one type over the other. For PGA, the motherboard is more durable. For LGA, the CPU is more durable as you shouldn't pay attention to the pins. A slightly bent CPU pin is better than broken or damaged pins on the motherboard. And this means a lower chance to repair an LGA motherboard. For PGA, it is more difficult to insert a CPU if damaged. And sometimes this happens with retro CPUs. For LGA, it is easier to remove and replace a CPU. With PGA, the pressure is on the CPU. The LGA CPU retention mechanism puts the pressure on the pins on the motherboard. This highlights the two different approaches of AMD and Intel towards the cost of CPUs. While AMD motherboards are less prone to damage of the socket, it means that AMD values the motherboard more. Intel makes the CPU less prone to damage, so they value the CPU more than the motherboard. The winner of this approach is subjective for each person and it's as easy as the question what do you value more, the CPU or the motherboard. Most of the CPUs we had in the 3.2 GHz series had pins and there are some precautions you need to take before placing them into the socket. A ZIF socket is called like that because it takes zero insertion force to put the CPU in contact with the motherboard. When you place the CPU over the socket, you should feel it drop into the socket. If it doesn't, there must be some bent pins or the CPU and socket are not compatible. Either way, you shouldn't force the CPU through the socket. Also, all sockets that accommodate PGA processors have a small lever that has two positions, open and closed. When fitting or removing a CPU, the lever should be in the position open, and after the CPU is in the socket, it should be moved to close. An exception is the socket 479 motherboard that has a screw with two positions, open and closed, that ultimately achieve the same goal. The Pentium M CPUs are also light as they don't have an integrated heat spreader and they will not fall into the socket because their pins will stick to the sides of the socket. As my benchmark for the Intel Xeon went, I was going to delete the section from the beginning of this clip, but it's better to have it out in the open since other people could learn from my mistakes. The socket 604 is also a ZIF socket and in the next part I messed up on both things I've just described. I forced the CPU and also the lever was not open. But fortunately, I was able to push the CPU in an almost closed socket without any damage to either CPU or socket. You can see me here finally figuring out the position of the lever and fixing the CPU in place. So remember that you should never do it like this. My personal experience with retro motherboards and CPUs is that I prefer bent pins on the CPU rather than on the motherboard. But if a motherboard fails, 
it is usually due to something else rather than bent pins on the socket, so this is not a real concern usually. There is one issue I have with the LGA type CPUs, as they have small electrical components mounted on the underside surface of the CPU, like capacitors, and I've seen processors with these components damaged, so that's another thing you should be aware of with the LGA type CPUs. If your CPU has pins, they should be straightened before you insert them into the socket. Here's an Intel Xeon I've dropped from about 3 feet. And here are the tools I usually use to straighten the bent pins. A pair of tweezers is usually all that's required to straighten the pins. Depending on how thin the pins are, you may pick a screwdriver. Next, there's a cutter. Also, the thickness of the blade should be used accordingly to the space between the pins. After the cutter, there's a credit card, and because it is made of plastic, it is sometimes a better pick than the metal blade. The last item is a mechanical pencil, also very useful. Let's see how we can use them individually to straighten some pins. The use of the tweezers and screwdriver are pretty straightforward. The blade of the cutter is a bit risky, as it can either cut you or damage the pins even more. It's usually useful to straighten a row of pins that are slightly bent, but it can create bigger problems if you put too much force in it. The next item is the card. It's a better choice than the cutter, because being made from plastic, there's a lower chance that it will break something, but I usually use it in the same way as the cutter. The last item on the list is a mechanical pencil, only useful on straightening one pin at a time and usually works on bent, not bent and curved pins. Now let's see the results. Straightening the pins is a difficult operation that requires very fine motor control. And although any one of the tools presented here can do the job, it's patience that ultimately delivers a working CPU. Thank you for watching and see you next time.